Hello everybody, it's Loomer. I'm here at the LA Convention Center for E3, and I'm very excited today to have a very special guest on this interview, uh, Patrice Desolet, who obviously is uh, the father of Assassin's Creed pretty much, and um, creative director on AC1, AC2, and most of Brotherhood, right? Kind of, <laughs> I've always been a little shaky on, on how that worked out, but, um, and also creative director on Sands of Time, Prince of Persia, one of my favorite games as well. So I'm really, really excited to be able to chat uh, with you. Thank you so much for joining me. <laughs> it, it is exciting for me too to be, uh, to be here and, and, and talk with you. Uh, yeah, so I mean, congratulations on uh, your new game. Uh, there's a whole history of what Patrice has been up to in the last five or six years. Um, there's a really great Game Informer article that just came out. It's like a nine-page spread. Uh, it has Halo 5 on the cover. I encourage everyone to read it. It'll give you a really good overview on what's been going on with THQ, Ubisoft. There's like a lawsuit involved. It's really crazy. But um, congratulations on announcing uh, Ancestors, the Humankind Odyssey, which is your new game. And we'll get to that later. But since this is primarily an Assassin's Creed channel, and Assassin's Creed fan base, I would be remiss not to start off with at least a couple questions. I'm sure um, one that's been on my mind, and I'm sure a lot of fans, is have you played any of the Assassin's Creed games since Brotherhood, like from Revelations forward? Uh, since Brotherhood, I played Assassin's Creed 3, and uh, quite frankly, it's, it's a bit difficult for me to go back and, and, and play uh, uh, Assassin's Creed because it, it kind of like uh, is my baby and I was used to be the guy in charge of what the game was all about and how it played and, and, and what was the story uh, about and uh, I played Assassin's Creed 3 for an hour and a half to two hours and I went like a bit crazy because I'm used to call the shots and they, were, they made decision that uh, I, would, I would not have made and but it's totally fine mm -hmm. and but I said oh, no I can't uh, the, the, the pleasure of playing the game was not there for me because I was kind of like working right and I have the same problem in general with uh, action adventure game when I want to actually don't you know go in, the, in a parallel universe that's why we play I don't play an action adventure game that much because I tend yeah. to work again and try to an analyze what the other team is doing and 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 with assassin it was it was the working part that I was talking about but also there was this emotional part where uh, uh, even though you know I'm, I'm pretty okay with the decision I made five years ago to go and and, and test uh, uh, different water, uh, I'm a bit uh, a bit sad of yeah. to have left the baby uh, behind me. So uh, it's a, yeah, this, there is this emotional uh, attachment with Assassin's Creed, which makes it difficult for me to to play and <laughs> and have fun. Yeah. So so nothing after that first couple hours of AC3, then none of the other okay. games. I'm sorry, so I can yeah. analyze Yeah, the story no, that's fine. You, you know, <laughs> yeah, that. it's totally understandable. And, like, I, I've heard stories of people who, like, play tests or whatever that it kind of ruins, like, when they play games because they're always, like, looking for bugs. And so I imagine mm -hmm. it's kind of the same thing for, you know, whatever your job is in the industry. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing, plus you put an emotional thing yeah. on top of it all. Uh, for me, Assassin's Creed was not just a job. Just, like, making games for me is not about having a job. It's about having a craft, about loving an art an art form, uh, a medium, and, uh, and so, you know, not being able to, you know, work on the sculpture anymore, uh, it's, it's, it's tough. And it's weird to see someone else do it. Yeah, I, I've always got the impression that it was very dear to your heart, like more so than the other games you work on. Even on your, when you joined Twitter like a year or two ago, like you notice you still in your bio with uh, NIT, EIP, yeah. nothing is true, everything is permitted. And yeah, what's funny is I saw, <laughs> this is a funny confession, sound, might sound slightly stalkerish, but like my first year at E3 was 2012, and I actually was hanging out at the Ubisoft area. I saw you come out of the AC3 demo area, and I was like, oh, cool, but, like Patrice is here, like, and whatever. And then I later at like the Ubisoft party also and I was a little too like oh uh, to be like hey Patrice like I love your games and you're awesome but I was just like I remember back then I saw I was like oh that's really cool like you know he's still kind of like on somewhat good terms like with Ubisoft and like you no know, friends there and everything and then like after that it just like went to shit yeah. with like THQ then it, it didn't work out it didn't work out uh, as planned but uh, at, uh, back then yes it, we were kind of like in a, in a peaceful mood yeah which we're not anymore, as you can see, I, I, I put in my defensive state. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you know, the lawsuit's ongoing, and so obviously I don't really want to spend like a whole lot of time talking. I think it's very well covered. And it is well covered in the Game Informer magazine interview, and it's basically the story is there. Yeah. And i got to be careful anyway about yeah. you know, what I say about that for legal reason. And so, but if you want, you know, if, if, if your public want to actually know what, what went on, it's, it's all there. Yeah. It's a nine page, it's about... You know, Minecraft, Ubisoft, 
and what I'm doing now, which is ancestors, the humankind, or this thing. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, so I definitely don't really want to cover much of that, but I am a little curious. Actually, when uh, Ubisoft bought THQ Montreal and they brought you back in, was there ever any discussion about uh, you possibly coming back to Assassin's Creed, or was it just always 1666? I get the impression that you were always like just focused on 1666, but I'm curious if it ever came up. Uh, without going into too much details, which I cannot. <laughs> go and, and, and tell you what was the secret reunions and meetings, uh, I was focused on making 1666 back then. Okay. But again, the entire story, and, and yeah. we, we went with, with Matt Burtz, the, the journalist, really in detail about what went on in, in, those, in those days and, and weeks. So go, go and read it. Yes, absolutely. It's really, it's a really well written, and it's really heartbreaking. I think, especially for a lot of fans, it's just... Like, I don't know, without knowing all the details, it's difficult, but I kind of want to just like grab you and like Eve and Yanis and just be like, like shake you on and be like, you guys made great games together. Just make more great games together. It shouldn't be difficult. I, yeah. But they're still making great games, yes. right? And I'm still yeah. making great games. It's true. Uh, eventually, I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, I, don't know, I, I, I have another family, yes. right? And uh, we'll make good action adventure game. And that's what third person, because that's what I do. Yeah. And, and, and it's the historical again about yeah. the I mean character that is now the player this is where where I'm going these days you know assassin and, and the prince was about a really strong Hollywood hero game now I'm trying to put this into the hands of the of the players and they create their hero this time and we follow the the history of, of human evolution Okay, I think that's a very good transition point. <laughs> very nice. I'm a pro on at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's guiding the interview more than me. No. <laughs> okay, so obviously, um, for those who don't know, humankind, uh, the ancestors, the humankind odyssey, or humankind, as it was yeah. once called. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> sorry. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, but it's true. I find, yeah, we made a mistake the first time. We, it's, <laughs> we're indie, so <laughs> we made that mistake. Nobody saw it. It was a D in human. Yeah kind of yeah. say the very first so this was the very uh, it was uh, at some conference i forget what was the conference yes, it was a developed uh, reboot developed conference in uh, dubrovnik yeah. so in king's landing basically yeah. uh, in croatia and it's it's part of our uh, philosophy is if i'm on stage to do a conference or whatever i need to have something to announce I'll talk about my career and I'll talk about design, but I want to be, you know, I have a mic, mm -hmm. so I want to announce something. And so sometimes I rush my team, say, okay, let's have something. And <laughs> in Croatia, we had this first version <laughs> yeah. of, of a teaser. Uh, uh, and so this week, we got the 2.0 version and the yes. D in new mint kind is yeah. gone. I and noticed that was removed from the YouTube version right after too. It was really just the reveal okay. off camera one that and I saw that and I was like, huh, I don't think that's intentional. <laughs> this way. But no, like, and we're like, we're, we're seven on the team and yeah. nobody saw it. <laughs> and it's, it went live and then it went like, whoa, there's a D there. <laughs> and it's like too late. But, yeah. but we're totally fine with that. It's, that, it's the beauty of like, uh, uh, of being out there with you guys yeah. right as soon as possible instead of like spending four five years six years and then coming up with a big thing and it's done now it's all about in, with panache digital games my my new studio that i found it with uh, with uh, my uh, partner gf Boivin, who's like sitting behind the camera nobody sees <laughs> but uh, the idea is like let's build smaller things and put them as soon as as we feel it's ready and sometimes there'll be some mistakes yeah. <laughs> and we'll make you know a next version like we have uh, with the teaser where we fix the mistakes and so the community will be part of the experience of building uh, the game even though we're in charge of the creative decision I feel like this time with Panache and Ancestors, the community will build it while we're working on it. And it's, it's, for me, it's really exciting for you guys. Yeah. So I'm just having this mammoth game already done, and then you're just like, oh, it's not, it doesn't work, or it's too late, or it's not what I would have done. Now you'll be able to, to, to fix stuff with us. Yeah. yeah so that actually uh, ties into something I was wondering earlier, actually. And maybe this won't be too interesting for anyone but me. I don't know. But um, typically, when 
you have like an indie developer studio and they're like, oh, we're going to have our fans help us build the game with us. Usually it's, I've seen that in concert with like a crowdfunding campaign. And you guys haven't taken any like crowdfunding money. You guys have kind of, you, you've gotten investments kind of more through a more traditional route, even though you're indie. Um, it's not like a big publisher relationship, but you have investors. Would you ever, did you ever consider doing like a crowdfunding campaign or what do you think of that whole movement that's really big right now? You know? uh, I, I thought about it. It's always been one of the ways <laughs> that was available to us to, to to have the money to make the game, yeah. but personally, I always felt like, and I will sound maybe uh, 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 presumptuous, but uh, like a, a last resort. <laughs> like I wanted to make sure that there was not like private equity, where there was not like a, a publisher that wanted to invest, and 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 also because a Kickstarter campaign is a project into itself, yeah. and I wanted to make a game yeah. and not a Kickstarter campaign. And so, but probably we'll do one eventually because it, it gives good press and gives money. Yeah. yeah. And but, it, it, but the game I make uh, uh, and the game I dream about and I design are maybe too big for Kickstarter. Mm. Or, uh, you know, I'm not like you, Suzuki. Yeah, right. <laughs> right? But it's true. Like, he just, like, uh, yeah. well, and he's also three million dollars in three days. Yeah, but that's all. Shenmue all 3. Yeah, it's part of like an existing big franchise that has a loyal fan base. It's a lot more difficult. Exactly. Like if you were trying to kickstart like Assassin's Creed 3, like if they had never made it, then I'm sure like you would get... Yeah. But Ancestors is a new IP, and uh, uh, and even though I think the fantasy is something people can relate, let's go through human evolution starting five million years ago, and let's uh, and let's start there and move and, and, and play and experience the moment where we did something for the first time yeah like pivotal moments like in history yes but of human evolution okay. not only in history with a big age so we mm. that's why we start that and it, 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 yeah, yes and in, in in the teaser we got that's why what the character does it's this first thing that was that made us different from a chimp mm -hmm. is that we stood up <laughs> and so we're gonna play with a character that can stand up and we'll tell the story of why w was it important for our survival? And so we'll play a kind of like, imagine a, a Prince of Persia like mission or Assassin's Creed mission mm -hmm. of a this 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 Aurorin in, in science, that's the name of our first this ancestors. Mm -hmm. Well, the first time he stood up and oh, he, he, he was able to run faster and then avoid uh, 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 enemies, right? Mm -hmm. Which are every single thing around him is an enemy back then yeah. <laughs> right we were really like apeless uh, uh, and and <coughs> uh, and then with that this this action sequence we leave you in the open world where you have to survive grind your character until we're ready to give you another action sequence yeah. attached to another evolution so in a catchy phrase yeah. to understand what we're making is Let's do civilization, civilization tech tree, okay. right? Yes. Meets Assassin's Creed. Okay. Okay. But without a lot of the killing, right? Because there's a lot of focus on nonviolent gameplay, from what I understand, I a little bit. I, I mean, not... But, but there, there will be some killing, yeah. but it's more about survival than, than assassination, that's for sure. sure. So, actually, um, I, I kind of neglected to uh, kind of give an overview of the game, although you did a very good job of describing it in general. But uh, one of the more fundamental things about it is that it's not just going to be one big game that drops at once. It's a little more episodic, so to speak, and I was wondering if you could elaborate on that a little bit. Uh, totally. Uh, uh, the core of, of, of our idea was like, how can we make a AAA quality experience without being 800 people doing it? Right, so this is where episodic came in, in into mind right away. So let's focus on quality of a small chunk of, of game, making sure that that is AAA quality. But we cannot deliver 45 hours of this AAA quality at the same time, because we are 20, 25-ish people at the end of the cycle we'll be working on that game so what do we do is that okay let's do a smaller one and do episodic but we have a problem with episodic like uh, uh, the telltale of this world is doing is that since they're really much about narrative in between episode you stop playing you finish the episode and then you're like okay uh, i'm waiting for two months to and then you move on 
you start playing other things and sometimes you don't go back so they spend a lot of money to make sure that you'll be back and play the next episode yep. so you know our idea is okay let's do the narrative part let's do action sequences about a human evolution but then leave the player in the area where you can continue play the game without narrative moments so you can still imagine if you would have only Masayaf as the first episode and we let you in Masayaf but you can do everything yep. in Masayaf we told the story but you can still grind Altair and he gets better in Masayaf and then eventually we did the kingdom and now you can go and then in the kingdom for a month a month and a half you can play in the kingdom and then Jerusalem opens and yeah. that's the idea and that's you, you not only are you going to have a action sequence narrative moment every month and but you can still continue play in between the episode in a open and, and, and uh, in, in an open world because I'm still in, in open world and it's still action uh, yeah. third person and it's about uh, you know interacting with the, with your environment and uh, yeah. uh, uh, and whatnot okay great so uh, give me an idea on when do you expect to have like the first <laughs> piece of gameplay are you going to play that game uh, look we're still building panache so the yeah. studio we're still painting the walls as we speak today in Montreal. They're still doing that. Uh, well, yeah, yeah I, saw your, I saw your tweet about that. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's my art director painting. Uh, we have one column, uh, we have four, but one will be orange. Anyway, uh, uh, and so, uh, <coughs> so let's open the studio. That will be in uh, about two, three weeks. And then we ramp up the team, because we're seven, but we want to be 20 at the end of the year-ish. And uh, uh, so, we think in 18 months we would have something like an early access type of, of delivery for the first uh, chapter because we like we, we divide it in chapters more than episode there's a lot of still like uh, discussion <laughs> to be to be have uh, upon that and so and, and to have a full you know worldwide res release of, of, uh, of the game uh, in, in, in two years in 24 months that's that's the plan yep that's the plan but then uh, everything evolves. Yeah, life happens. It's life it life never... Happens. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so I'm actually kind of curious. Uh, I interviewed Corey at my first E3 here, and we talked about this idea that he has wanted to kind of do for a while, where he really likes this idea of a game where you could play as multiple assassins, like across different time periods, like in a single game. Um, and he was saying, like, you know, ideally, you would have the six assassin statues below Monteregioni, uh, the Auditori Villa, and, like, each one of those would be, like, a separate, like, chapter almost, like, in a story or something. But he was like, but, you know, it's just really difficult to do because you have to recreate, you know, whole different time periods. Like, you can't reuse assets as much and everything. And, you know, I see something like Ancestors, and it's hitting all these different time points and everything, and I'm a little curious if um, you're worried about that same kind of... Um, that's you know that same kind of issue where you start out with you know you're starting in the jungle as like a monkey and then like but then later on you have to build a like a, I, I'm sorry yes the <laughs> what it, I, I, I don't remember the word the term what is it again Ororin the Ororin. Next one would be the Ramidus okay. and then there's Australopithecus <laughs> and then the Homo habilis is coming and, and 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 but at the beginning of it all what's for us it's not about architecture it's nature mm -hmm. so it's settings and then Really, our goal is like let's focus on one setting at a time, okay. but it, it 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 will not be the biggest in the world. It will be a pretty nice and like like playground, but we got to keep it. And as we have, I've got a bunch of, of, of uh, me mechanics to make sure that. <laughs> anyway, I I cannot go into detail of the design <laughs> yet, but uh, but uh, so a nice playground. Okay. The twenty, you know, good people on the team. Let's focus on this area make it as as uh, triple a as uh, quality as possible and then we'll move to the next one yeah. so yes the first one is the jungle because we came up from the tree in a jungle in kenya and or ethiopia i don't, I don't remember which one is, is where yet uh, and 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 then whoop, we go elsewhere let's do this but once we'll have the jungle part then in our in other episode we can always reuse the jungle because we've yeah. done all the behaviors we've done all the mechanics over there and jungle still exists so uh, <laughs> yeah. <we> could <laughs> yeah, it's true eventually you'll have a tribe eventually you'll have your village and then we'll build the very first village that is not florence 
see, is that we are building the Lego blocks in order eventually to do a game set, you yeah. know, in the Vikings era with the Ancestors uh, franchise. It's just that we're building the Lego blocks as we move forward and we're giving it to you. Yeah, as long as you're you kind of... Play it and participate and say, oh, we... And maybe eventually we'll say, okay, what's the next time period you want Ancestors to go in? And then we'll do it. Interesting, yeah. So I guess as long as you don't jump too far, like you don't go straight from, you know, prehistoric times to like the 1960s, like you might have like a natural evolution in um, like uh, the environments you use and everything where you do get like a lot of reuse out of it. And over time, I think, yeah. But then you never know. You never know. Because <laughs> you, you know me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So like here and there and, yeah. and maybe... You know, we'll come and then for, for, we'll do a small five minutes of something that is totally different that takes place uh, in 1989 during the, you know, the fall of the Berlin Wall. Yeah, or why like... Not? Why not? I mean, I mean yeah. I'm mean, i indie now. Like, uh, why not? Yeah. Let's do it. Or suddenly you wake up out of the banimus in the modern... No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> no, like no, that. no, no. I'm just kidding. But it's true. No, but, uh, you know, when I left Assassin, I left Assassin. Yeah. I'm not redoing Assassin. Yes. So yes, there is component, the stuff I know how to do, like uh, interactivity or the third person that I can continue. I history is something, is a subject that uh, I really love. I, I, I say that to my team all the time, is that for me, history, the real one, is a fantasy land for us, mutants. Because uh, a modern man, we are mutants, uh, uh, mutants <laughs> if we compare only like 50 to 100 years ago. The way we lived back then, it's like, we could not understand really, and yeah. it's like, and prehistor prehistorical uh, uh, animals were freaking beasts. I just, I just saw a picture of a of a crow that is like like five meters, like wide span, like, and it's crazy. Mm -hmm. This is what we're gonna find in ancestors, and tell also how our ancestor lived, and and uh, uh, and their, their their struggle for survival. That's what really inspires me. But I'm not into this meta story of like, I'm not into the conspiracy thing. It's a lot more scientific than anything I ever done. Uh, okay. uh, it's true. Uh, uh, we want that feel of, of, um, of a documentary, feeling like you play and there's a TV crew or some sort that follows it and the camera shots, it's more like BBC Planet Earth type of, of uh, with a, probably a narrator. And 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 but you are the really this time the co-creator of that uh, of that experience and the, the the path you know through discovery mm -hmm. uh, uh, will shape the hero uh, at the end of, of, of your experience. So the tribe that you'll have in the uh, you know chapter nine will be your family. You will you know the the, the, the family will have the scars of, of, of your choices. Which this, I think, this sentence I'll 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 keep and reuse it for you know multiple e trees because I like it. <laughs> yeah. Your family will have the scars of your choices. Okay, so let me just follow up with maybe just two more questions and we'll wrap yeah. this up. So, um, since this is Assassin's Creed channel, do you have anything in particular that you might want to? Is is there like a pitch to the AC fan yeah, about yeah, this yeah, game? Yeah, yeah, there, there is something, and then you mentioned it. You know, talking about my tweet thing. And I said it in, in, in one of my, of my conference, uh, you, you know that nothing is true, if, uh, everything is permitted? It is the core of it all. Yeah. And it's not uh, just like a catchy phrase. It's, it's an actual, it, it, it's the actual way I'm living. I don't jump and then haystack, I don't assassinate, but I actually believe in this <laughs> Assassin's Creed. Yeah. And, and so for you guys that, that, that love Assassin's Creed, try to live it. That nothing is true, everything is permitted. So dream big and then and, 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 and you do it. And there's no real book out there telling you how life is supposed to be lived. It, se it, it seems maybe like uh, uh, deep or too deep, but it is, it is true. And this is, for me, I live like that. But maybe that's why eventually I said, yes, I can leave Assassin's Creed. Because nothing yeah. is true, everything is permitted. That's very... I love it. It's zen. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, it, it is zen. It, it is like, wow, all the pressure, all the social pressure about, oh, you're supposed to be like this and you're supposed to behave like that. It's all BS because nothing is true Sci in science and <laughs> quantum physics. It's, we, we, there's no separation between us two. There is stuff and we're the same yeah. freaking stuff, but it's crazy, but it's true. A and you can do what you want. 
I love it. Okay, last question. I'm, I'm, I promise I'll make it quick. Uh, Altair or Ezio? Okay. Oh, Altair or Ezio? <laughs> it can, no, you can't. This is no, no, no. I got I got two daughters. It's like you're asking me Alice or Penelope. But deep down, no, no, wanna out? No, 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 I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> no, okay, okay. no, no. Altair is the monk. He's the solitary monk. He, but he's got this strangeness in that. He's, he's been, you know. Uh, uh, brought to become an assassin and he, he, he's okay he's a machine <laughs> he is a machine he's like the creed like personified yes. pretty much by the end of it anyway yeah. yeah Ezio is someone who's learning to become Altair yeah. and he is at the end somehow yeah. and, and but he's my Italian hero he's, he's the but it's true uh, uh, one of the example I used uh, at the beginning said let's do a, a, a it's like an Italian movie it's like uh, La Familia the, the, yeah. from uh, Ettore Scola it's like this huge and so I cannot <laughs> yeah. I love them both fair enough fair enough <laughs> okay, sure. well thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me and address the fans um, uh, would you like to tell fans like where they can reach you on Twitter and keep up with ancestors and panache in general yes, I'm really bad at this but uh, yes uh, you can follow me on Twitter I think it's Patrice Dez D-E-Z at, at, at Pat no at Patrice Dez yeah yeah Sorry, my producer's trying to tell me where we're going to <laughs> It's at Patrice Dez with a Z mm -hmm. at the end. Uh, and then you go on the, at panachedigitalgames.com. All the infos are there, man. And it's like follow us on Twitter. On, uh, uh, on, on Now we have a, also a YouTube channel uh, yes. uh, where you can <laughs> see the Ancestors uh, teaser. Yep. It's the longest yeah. teaser ever. Three minutes and a half. Yeah, it's like <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, so go go there and uh, panachedigitalgames.com. Everything is there. Great, and we'll put links to all of that in the video description, including the teaser trailer. So thank you once again, Patrice, and hopefully we'll talk again soon. Maybe. Yes. Okay, yes. thank you. All right, bye everyone. Check out my other E3 videos, and we'll see you later. Bye.